come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. What the? Welcome to The Wrong Reviewer. My name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And today's episode, as you can see from the intro, is going to talk about two things that you can do to speed up an older generational laptop. Now, nothing's more frustrating than working on an older laptop and waiting for it to boot into Windows, having a chug and struggle opening Word document, uh, opening up Microsoft Teams, or even like opening up multiple browsers within Google Chrome or Internet Explorer and um, it's just chugging along and you're just so frustrated especially if you're used to working on faster machines the laptop that i'm going to be upgrading today actually belongs to a good friend of ours carrie and her requirements for a laptop was to do word processing to do uh, powerpoint presentations to stream occasional you know netflix to be able to access microsoft Teams to collaborate with other teachers and her and her students and to be able to open up multiple browsers for her to access different applications for her, uh, for her teaching resources. And so that was her requirement. And that were, those requirements sound pretty light and she was still having issues with her laptop and that's why she brought it to my attention. So I'm gonna get her to explain what her frustrations are and then I'm gonna talk about some of the things I'm gonna do to kind of help fix that for her. I'm a teacher, and right now I'm working in a blended learning style environment, which means at home I'm updating a lot of materials online for my students who are working remote. I was finding I was having a lot of difficulties just waiting. There was a lot of lag times, and the energy being used by the Teams platform was incredible. My computer was so slow. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about two things that you can do to speed up those generational laptops. The first thing to do is to check to see if you can upgrade your RAM. Um, in your computer. And the second thing is replacing your mechanical hard drive, such as this one here, uh, with a solid state hard drive. We're also gonna do a benchmark comparison in terms of loading into Windows and loading into Teams to see how much faster it is just by swapping those two things out. All right, so as you're watching this video and you find it helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. So the laptop that we're placing the RAM and hard drive on is the HP 8470P model. Um, based on the research, we think it's from a late 2012 laptop. The laptop is a third gen Intel Core i5-3320 chip. It's 2.6 gigahertz, three megabytes L3 cache with two cores. And it has only two sticks of two gigabytes of DDR3 PC3 1288 SD RAM, which is rated at 1600 megahertz. And the mechanical hard drive was a 500 gigabyte, 7200 RPM smart SATA 2 hard drive. Okay, so what I wanted to do now was to show you guys how long it takes to boot into Windows on four gigs of RAM and on mechanical hard drive. So this is me doing that timing test. So I sped up the time because they want to sit through the whole thing. But I was quite surprised to see how long it actually takes. So we're at a minute now and it still hasn't loaded. Okay, starting to see some progress here. We see the name coming on. Still can't log in yet though. And that's over two minutes. So it took about two minutes and 48 seconds to log in. I apologize for the quality of the screen. I didn't have the exposure right, so I had to boost up the dynamic range. So as you can see, with nothing loaded, or it's at 68% memory and 100% disk. But as soon as I start Microsoft Teams, the power usage is high. And you can see the memory is starting to go to 86, 87%. The disk usage is 100%. 90%, 93, 94%. This is just from loading Teams. So you can see with four gigs of RAM, it's just not enough to run Microsoft Teams. And that's what was slowing the application down. You can see with Microsoft Teams, it was already hitting 93% and then it finally loaded. But even when it loaded, it was still sluggish and it took about 46 seconds to load the application. 
which is very slow. Okay, so taking a look at the back of the laptop itself. So this unit is the HP 8470P 500 gigabyte DVD Windows 10. And one of the great things about this unit is it is a toolless way of taking off the back. So I don't have to worry about any uh, screws to un undo. So it makes it very easy to upgrade this unit. So here you can see the RAM slots. There's two of them against two sticks of two gigabyte RAM. So I'm just gonna push the pins apart and take it out. And on the bottom left-hand side, this is where the mechanical hard drive is. Um, we already took it out. Um, there's a mounting bracket in there, but because of uh, the filming wasn't correctly, this is actually a second time filming this. So, but the bracket was already out. So this is just me sliding it out. Um, so that's the mounting bracket that comes with. I'm just gonna pause the video here and tell you what we did before we actually reinstalled the Kingston hard drive. One of the major things that we did after we took out the mechanical hard drive was to clone this mechanical hard drive. And what we used was this next uh, next star HDD duplicator by Vantec. It has two slots here. You can fit three and a half inch, two and a half inch in solid state drives. And so we put the mechanical hard drive uh, in here. And then we put the second solid state drive right here. I had it hooked up to my desktop and I use something called a Cronus software to clone the mechanical hard drive to the solid state drive. And it's very important that you have to clone the hard drives. You just can't copy it and paste it into a solid state drive thinking that's going to boot up. That's because the mechanical hard drive that contains the operating system has boot sectors in here that the computer recognizes. So you have to clone those two. So you just can't copy that. So here I am just uh, putting the mounting bracket back on um, and then I'm just going to slide it back into the SATA slot. Took a bit of finagling here as I try to uh, get into the right spot. And then I'm going to remount it with the screws, make sure it's sitting in nice and tight. I'm just going to speed up the time here. You don't really need to see me uh, mount all the screws here. And then again, it's just nice and tight. So for RAM, we're adding two sticks of eight gigabytes DDR3 1600 RAM. So we're putting this to 16 gigs of RAM. So the original setup was two sticks of two gigs of RAM for four gigs total. And we basically quadrupled it to 16 gigs of RAM. So it should really increase the speed. Uh, just put the RAM back in, it'll clip into place. And now I'm just gonna put the cover back on. Again, it's toolless, which is nice. You just slide it into place and it snaps into it. And then we'll put the battery back on and now we'll do some benchmarks. Okay, so now after we updated the laptop, we had 16 gigabit of RAM, added 256 SSD. We're gonna boot into Windows 10 just to see how fast it is now. Already we can see the HP symbol after 10 seconds. You see the shell's computer at 15 seconds. And the previously it was almost a minute and a half before we saw the shells. And now it's loaded. So about 26 seconds to load into Windows completely. Okay, so the difference is about two minutes and 20 seconds faster. And based on calculation, it's 84% faster. So here I open up Task Manager to see what the CPU memory and disk usage is. So you can see from before screenshot, memory now is at 11% versus 67%, and the disk is at 10% versus almost 100%.
Okay, so now we'll open up Task Manager with Microsoft Teams running to compare the before and after. So now memory is at 19%, disk is at 0%. And if I look at what it was before, Microsoft Teams was 93% using up the memory and the disk was 100%. So you can see adding up to 16 gigs of RAM and SSD has really helped out with the system resources while running applications. The speed is incredibly faster and it's just so much easier to work from home now. Thank you, Wong Reviewer. All right, so that concludes my video on what you can do to speed up an older laptop. And this is really beneficial for those of you who are on a tighter budget and don't want to spend money on buying a new laptop as requirements don't really change that much. So this is a budget-friendly way of updating your laptop. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.